But we begin tonight with a clash at the University of Michigan just moments ago. Chopper 7 flying over a demonstration at the Diag. You could see police and pro-Palestinian protesters pushing and shoving each other. This is a live look from Chopper 7 showing what the Diag looks like right now. We reached out to University of Michigan police about any arrests and have not yet heard back. And earlier today, the Jewish Federation of Detroit was vandalized with anti-Semitic graffiti. This comes as today marks one year since that Hamas-led attack killed hundreds in Israel, triggering a devastating attack on Palestinians in Gaza. Thank you so much for joining us for 7 News Detroit at 6. I'm Carolyn Clifford. More than 1,200 men, women and children were killed in that attack. Hamas also taking 254 people hostage, including 12 Americans. About 101 of those hostages still being held today, and the rest have been killed. The retaliation of that attack resulting in the deaths of 42,000 Palestinians over the past year, many of them women and children. 7 News Detroit reporter Whitney Burney is in Bloomfield Township, where community members are reflecting on the lives lost and hopeful for peace ahead. The Jewish Federation says this is now the third time in one year that their building has been vandalized. You can see some of that damage still here this afternoon. Some of that spray painting on the front door and on the call box. The anti-Semitic rhetoric even more hurtful as they reflect on the lives lost one year ago. In bright red paint. We've left this up this morning for people to see. We want the world to see anti-Semitic words confronting members of the Jewish community in Bloomfield Township Monday morning. Police and the FBI now investigating after vandals tagged the words Free Palestine, Expletive Israel and Intifada on the windows, sidewalks and doorways of the Max M. Fisher Federation building overnight. To feel like you're, you're, you're hated all the time is not a really pretty feeling. Sylvia Sherman's grandfather's name, the one that adorns the building. I'm not surprised at that because it is a Jewish building, but it's sickening and, and it's surprise. it was still when I saw it. On, on the video this morning, I was screaming at home. The vandalism even harder to cope with as Metro Detroit Jews reflect on the more than 1,200 lives lost on this day last year when Hamas terrorists attacked a music festival in Tel Aviv. Thinking back a year, you might expect this to by now be a scar, and it would have been a really awful scar. But it's really more of a deep, open wound. That's what we're feeling as hostages remain, as the war continues. The subsequent war in Gaza has now claimed the lives of around 42,000 Palestinians, many women and children removed from the fighting. And as the conflict also brings a rise of Islamophobia and anti-Semitism here at home, the calls for peace are renewing, especially from those who experienced the bombings firsthand. When we went, went there, um, we uh, couldn't believe what we can see. West Bloomfield doctor Amar Ghanem spent 17 days working in a hospital in Gaza this spring. The loss of civilians every day. Everybody deserves to have a life with dignity, including Palestinian, Israeli, um, uh, including like uh, uh, all Arabs and Lebanese, as what's going on now in, in Lebanon as well. We wish everybody live on peace with dignity. As a human, that's why that's my wish at this time. In Bloomfield Township, Whitney Burney, 7 News Detroit. Seems so simple, right? Peace and dignity.